So far, we defined exponential function, logarithmic functions, and trigonometric and hyperbolic functions. Now, in this module, we are going to start talking about the inverse trigonometric functions. And of course, in our next modules, we will focus on inverse hyperbolic functions. Now, it is very natural uh, to talk about the inverse of a given elementary function. And in this module, we will focus on the inverse of trigonometric functions. Okay. Now, uh, we will start uh, from the very basic trigonometric function, the inverse of sine. And uh, we denote this with arc sine z. And this notation has advantage over the notation of sine raised to power minus 1 z. Because in this way, we can also mention uh, the principal uh, branch of this function as well by just replacing small a with capital A. So, this uh, notation is advantageous on the, the sine raised to power minus 1 notation. Now, uh, one thing to notice is the periodic nature of sin z makes it a multiple to 1 function. So, it is not a 1 to 1 function and if we want to talk about the inverse of this uh, sin z, then um, it is not going to be a function. In fact, it is going to be a multivalued function. Now, uh, there is a very uh, effective geometrical visualization of uh, multivalued, uh, basically uh, multiple to many functions. So, in this uh, uh, function of sin z, we are going to see uh, that geometrical visualization. So, it is known as the Riemann surface and it is attributed due to this uh, mathematician Bernard Riemann. So, let us see how to construct a Riemann surface of a given function. So, we are introducing this or we are describing this uh, for the function of sin z, but of course, we can adopt the same strategy for other multiple to many functions. So, in this case, the function is uh, sin z and we chose uh, a region in the z plane such that the function is 1 to 1 in that region. And from our discussion of sin z, uh, we, we have seen that the image of this uh, square region under this function sin z is going to be this elliptical region. And we discuss in very detail uh, uh, in our discussion of trigonometric function that uh, the images of these lines are going to be these uh, lines in this elliptical region. Okay, that is the step number 1. Okay, so, find a region in which the function is 1 to 1, find its image. In the second portion, what do we do? We, we choose another uh, region. Okay, so, we move on to other region. Okay, so, over here, as you remember, this is minus pi by 2, this is pi by 2 and over here, it is uh, the y values are the same or the values along the imaginary axis are the same and the values along real axis are pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2. So, that is another a square region and the image of this is going to be uh, once again another elliptical region. So, the image of S naught and S 1 are elliptical region. And in, in this uh, step 2, what do we do? We cut these elliptical regions in the way as you can see on the screen. And uh, there is another thing to notice is the, the image of this uh, bold line is this bold line and the image of this dotted line is basically this dotted line. And similarly, you can see in this case, the image of this bold line is basically this bold line and the image of this dotted line is basically this dotted line. And of course, we can move on to the other region from 3 pi by 2 to 5 pi by 2 and up to so on. Okay. In the third step, we define this Sn region uh, moving from 2n minus 1 pi by 2 to 2n plus 1 pi by 2. So, in fact, it is going to be something like this. Okay. So, once again, uh, the y coordinate or the value along imaginary axis is minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 and the value on real axis is basically 2 and minus 1 pi by 2 to 2 and plus 1 pi by 2. So, it is basically this region and it is S n and we can calculate the value uh, the image of this uh, square under this mapping sin z and it is going to be another elliptical region and once again we cut the two sides of this elliptical region and we glue uh, these regions in consecutive way like we glue E naught with E 1, we glue E 1 with E 2, E 2 with E 3 and in general E n with E n plus 1. And when we glue them together, then we get the following uh, uh, image. Uh, this is the geometrical visualization of uh, this uh, sine function. So, in, in this way, we can uh, describe the behavior of uh, sin z in a very compact way. So, instead of uh, uh, spreading onto the w plane, we are just uh, piling up and we are making a tower just to uh, see uh, the behavior of this function sin z. 
and uh, uh, if you want to really explore what is really happening so you can see on the screen that there are different sheets and they are glued them uh, okay so we glued them uh, like the way we described and they are piled up and they are making a tower and of course they are moving on there are infinitely many sheets like this and the shape of uh, uh, and the uh, way of gluing them is basically the same basically if we want to talk about the inverse of sin z since it's a multiple to many function so the inverse of sin z that is arc sin z is going to be a multi-valued function and so we can talk about its branches we can talk about its uh, principal branch etc etc okay so how do we uh, define so arc sin z is going to be equal to minus iota log of iota z plus 1 minus z square square root okay so it's a multi-valued function as you can see from this definition log logarithmic is a multi-valued function but uh, it's not the only uh, reason why it is multi-valued so there's another reason that uh, there is a square root function involved and we know that square root function gives us two outputs two square roots of a given complex number so if you input z then it is going to give me two outputs of this uh, portion of the definition so due to these two reasons this arc sin z is a multi-valued function so if you want to describe uh, the values of z for which we get a particular branch of this function then it is going to be a very complicated task in this case so we are going to ignore this discussion in this course now let's talk about why uh, we define arc sin z in this way of course uh, we defined uh, sin z so it has to come from the definition of uh, sin z so to uh, prove this identity we just say okay so let omega is equal to arc sin z and since it is the inverse of sin z so this implies that z is equal to sin of w and uh, we know the definition of sin w so this implies w is equal to e raised to power iota w minus e raised to power minus iota w divided by 2 iota so that's how we define uh, sin w and what is the task over here so task over here is to find find w in terms of z so if we can find w in terms of z then uh, we should be able to get this thing because w is uh, basically function of uh, z arc sin z okay so to obtain this uh, the procedure is very simple just write it down in the following way minus 1 over e raised to power iota w multiplying both sides with e raised to power iota w so we, we get 2 iota z e raised to power iota w is equal to e raised to power iota w square minus 1 so this implies that we get e raised to power iota w square minus 2 iota z e raised to power iota z and minus 1 so basically this is a quadratic function okay so it is quadratic in e raised to power iota w so we can easily uh, use the quadratic formula and find the value of e raised to power iota uh, w and what do we get so this is going to be equal to 2 iota z plus minus 4 iota square z square and minus 4 a c so basically it becomes plus 4 divided by 2 a okay so if we if we simplify this expression then uh, we get uh, this thing and uh, since uh, there is iota involved in here and taking uh, log of both sides we can easily get this expression so that's how uh, we got got this definition of arc sine z okay so it's a multi-valued function due to the reason that logarithm and the square root is a multi-valued function and uh, finding out uh, which values of z corresponds to one branch or what is the principal branch is a very tedious task in this case okay so uh, when the principal values are used okay so whatever uh, the domain of z is going to be we are not going into the detail of the values of z which are going to give us the principal branch but uh, assume that we get the principal branch of this thing uh, then uh, we denote it with this capital a so we just write down arc sin z with capital a so it is a basically uh, a one to one uh, function now it is basically by definition a, a function okay it is not a multi valued function now uh, let's talk about the geometrical properties of this uh, inverse trigonometric function now this arc sin z this principal uh, value of this uh, inverse function uh, maps the upper half plane uh, to uh, upper half plane but the values are restricted 
in this uh, vertical strip from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. And if you uh, focus in particular about its values, then you can see on the screen uh, on uh, this side we have z plane, on this side we have w plane and you can trace uh, these blue lines and the images of these blue lines are these blue lines, images of these red lines are basically these red lines. So, we can trace the values and we can um, uh, visualize uh, the properties of this inverse function. And uh, more importantly, we can uh, visualize them in this way. So, for example, if we choose a square in the z plane, then its image, so you can see its image on the right hand side, it is going to be this very interesting shape. Okay, so this shape is going to be the image of this square and if you choose some other region for example this vertical line then it is going to be this uh, region in the w plane okay so uh, in some portion it is part of a circle then it is a straight line then part of a circle so very interesting geometry involved with this uh, arc sin z and similarly moving on to the horizontal line so the image of this horizontal line is going to be this uh, portion of this circle it's basically a circular arc over here Okay. And similarly, we can choose uh, some other uh, big square and you can see that what is going to be the image of this thing. So, if you want to prove this thing, they are going to be a bit complicated, but uh, eventually it is going to be very interesting uh, exercise for you if you want to see that uh, images of different geometries from Z plane into the W plane. Moving on to our next inverse trigonometric function which is r cosine z. Once again instead of writing down cosine raised to power minus 1, we are using the notation r cosine z. So, uh, on the same lines we can uh, uh, basically prove that r cosine z is going to be equal to minus iota log of z plus iota 1 minus z square 1 by 2. Once again there are two reasons why this is a multivalued function one is logarithmic function and the second there is a square root function involved and once again uh, if you want to find out the values of z or you want to find out if you want to find out the conditions on z for which it is uh, uh, it is going to give me one branch of this function it is going to be a bit complicated in this case now let's see why do we get uh, the definition of r cosine x uh, r cosine z to be equal to uh, this so for that note that r cosine z is equal to pi by 2 minus r cosine arc sine z and we know what is the definition of arc sine z so just replace the definition of arc sine z over here and uh, this is pi by 2 so moving on uh, we we can just uh, write down uh, minus iota and uh, uh, using the properties of logarithm we can easily get this and uh, moving on we can just uh, uh, write down okay so uh, minus iota and iota over here and uh, there is no change in this portion and this is basically log of iota and by definition of uh, logarithm we can easily see that uh, log of iota is basically natural log of uh, uh, the modulus of iota which is 1 so natural log of uh, 1 is 0 and uh, plus iota ok so let me write it down over here so natural log of modulus of iota plus iota argument of iota so argument of iota is basically pi by 2 so what do we get so it is basically this thing ok so log of 1 is 0 so plus iota pi by 2 so that is why we can replace pi by pi iota by 2 with log of i so moving on using the properties of uh, logarithm ok so first taking this minus iota common and then uh, moving the uh, moving on and using the properties of logarithm we can just say that log of this plus log of this is equal to log of a into b so log of ok so a into b is equal to log of a plus log of b ok so this is log of a this is log of b and this is going to be equal to log of a into b and uh, simplifying this thing we get this expression which is exactly the definition of r cosine z ok uh, similarly we can sketch the principal branch of uh, the following function ok so we denote the principal branch with capital A R C cosine of z ok so if we want to see the geometrical properties so once again we can sketch different regions in the z plane and we can see its images under this uh, uh, r cosine z ok so over here we sketched a square in the z plane and the image of this square in the z plane is basically this shape Okay, uh, once again, um, 
to prove these uh, properties is going to be a little bit tedious task because uh, they are uh, different portions of different uh, uh, type of curves. So, for example, this is kind of a circular region, this is kind of portion of a uh, hyperbola and up to so on. So, once again a hyperbola, a circular arc and then again a hyperbola and moving on. And uh, similarly, if we choose another uh, region like this line and the image of this line is going to be once again this portion of circle and then moving on. Okay, And uh, once again we can talk about the image of this uh, horizontal line and the image of this horizontal line is going to be this uh, portion. Okay, So, uh, some sort of uh, elliptical portion. Okay, So, and uh, once again we can choose any uh, random shape. Okay, So, let us talk about this big square and uh, let us talk about the image of this thing. So, the image of this thing is basically once again this shape and it is composed of kind of many different kind of uh, curves. So, that is why I am saying that it is a kind of a complicated task to prove this thing. Okay, And similarly, we can choose any other line and we can choose any other line and we can see its image and we can choose any random region and we can see its image. Okay, So, uh, in fact, we can uh, choose any kind of image in the z plane and we can try to find out it, its image in the w plane. Of course, we are talking about the principal branch. Okay, uh, Moving on to our uh, third inverse trigonometric function arc tan z. Okay, so, in this case, uh, it is uh, kind of simple now to define this thing. Basically, uh, there is a relation between uh, the tan and sine and cosine. So, that is why it is very simple uh, to define uh, that this is going to be equal to iota by 2 log of uh, iota plus z over iota plus z. But this uh, inverse function is a kind of simple as compared to sine and cosine because uh, it involves only one multivalued function over here uh, which is the logarithmic function and not any other square root functions. So, that is why uh, it is kind of uh, simple to deal with this arc tan z. Now, uh, let us talk about its uh, geometrical properties. So, for example, if we want to talk about uh, the image of uh, some uh, rectangular region in the z plane and if we want to talk about its image in the w plane, then let us see what it is going to be. So, uh, in this case, it, it has some very, very interesting and beautiful geometrical property. Okay, So, over here you can see that uh, this is basically a straight line and then moving on with this circular arcs and then moving on to some uh, arc and then moving on with a straight line and then arcs. So, it is composed of different many arcs and straight lines. So, uh, uh, calculations wise it is a complicated task, but uh, the geometry is very beautiful in this case. Now, let us talk about uh, vertical line. So, the vertical line is, uh, so the image of this vertical line is kind of uh, not very noticeable, but you can see that it is kind of portion of a uh, this uh, circle. Okay, So, it is a kind of a circular arc. Now, uh, let us see the image of this horizontal line. So, the image of this horizontal line is going to be this uh, portion of a Okay, so, circular arc and then straight line and now if we uh, consider this big uh, rectangle then uh, let us see what is the image. So, the image of this is going to be, uh, it is not very noticeable but circular arcs, many circular arcs, then straight line, circular arcs, then straight line and up to so on. And if we choose uh, for example, a line passing through the origin then it is going to be a curve, it is, if we choose another line then it is going to be another curve and if we choose some other region then we can easily find its image as well. So, in this module uh, we discussed inverse trigonometric function and uh, most importantly we discussed their geometrical properties. So, very interesting and beautiful geometrical properties. If you want to talk about the calculations involved behind uh, these uh, geometrical properties then uh, the algebraic calculations can be a little bit tedious, but uh, they are very beautiful and interesting properties.